Hi, welcome to episode four of the Paper Crane Yarns Knitting Podcast. My name is Ashley. I'm coming to you from my dye studio here in Calera, Alabama. I am the hand dyer and project bag maker behind Paper Crane Yarns, which can be currently found on Etsy and Instagram and soon to be here at my storefront location. Um, I'm Paper Crane Yarns on Ravelry, again on Instagram, and on Etsy. You can find all of my information linked below, including some show notes for all the projects that I talk about today. So yeah, episode four already. How did that happen? Um, thank you guys for watching me and supporting me if you have. Um, if this is your first episode, hopefully you'll stick around. Uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe and uh, follow me on my other platforms if you want to see more of what I'm up to day to day. So I have some knitting to talk about and later on in the episode I have a shop update to go through. Um, today is Sunday, May 30th, 2021. Uh, it's, it's around 1 or 2 in the afternoon and my shop update will be at 5 p.m. Central Time tonight if you're watching this the day of uh, release. And I'm probably not going to be able to get this podcast out until the update is over, but you should be able to find that over on Etsy if you're getting to it pretty quickly. Um, so we'll get to that in a bit. And at the end, I'm also going to do something I haven't done too much yet, which is talk a little bit more about um, myself and maybe get into a little bit of personal life stuff. Uh, it's still very foreign for me to be sharing on the internet like this. Um, I've been, you know, I haven't really had a social media platform in years, so it's, it's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm a, despite making a YouTube channel, uh, a pretty um, reserved person, like I don't really share a lot about myself, but. I will at least talk about my favorite author and some of my favorite books at the end, and we'll see where that goes. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's start with what you guys all actually came for, which is the knitting. And the first thing I have to show is my only finished object, although I am close to the second one. And this one's probably to be expected, but these are my finished uh, Favorite Socks Pattern by Bull and Vine. These are made from my hand dyed yarn. Um, and if you've seen my other episodes, you already know I'm, where I'm going with this, but uh, this is not a yarn that I am currently dying to sell. Um, yeah, just, just an experiment with colorways. Not something I ever intended to sell, so I decided to just knit it up into some socks. So here they are. Um, yeah, they're a little crazy. So Woolen Vine's favorite socks pattern, it features, of course, a heel flap and gusset. These are cuffed down. Um, and yeah, I, I'm i pretty happy with the way that they turned out, you know, despite like the colors not really being my, my thing. I think that they are really cozy. Um, they're a little bit roomy. So I think I might have been a bit overzealous or maybe not paying as much attention as I usually do when I knitted these. I mean, they fit, they definitely fit, but they're, my gauge might have been a little off. I'm not sure. They're just a little bit baggier than, us than usual, but I do like for them to kind of be so uh, sort of slouchy so that I can sort of just crumple them up like that. That's usually how I wear them. So yeah, I can't wait for it to be cold again, and you guys might be looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm sure a lot of you are thankful for the warmth, but I'm, I definitely prefer cold weather. And, you know, I didn't, I'm not from Alabama, but I have lived here for quite a while now, and it does get pretty hot. Uh, despite today, it's nearly June, and the temperature dropped significantly, so it's pretty crazy. I, I probably could have worn these today. But yeah, I won't ramble on too much because if, if you've watched my other episodes, you've probably already seen them. I do love the way that the toe came out, these micro stripes, and the heel. 
all of these little micro stripes. I think they're pretty cool. So yeah, not much more to say about these. Um, other than these took me a while to knit because I just wasn't in love with, with the yarn. And so, you know, it was a little bit more of a labor of, of love, you know, for the, simply for the knitting process, not as much for the object in this case, but, uh, Tuesday will be June 1st, which is when Summer Sock Camp, which is hosted by uh, Kay, the Crazy Sock Lady. Um, I'm sure you've heard of it, but Summer Sock Camp is starting on June 1st, so I wanted my sock projects to be all wrapped up so that I could cast on for Sock Camp. Um, I mentioned this a little last episode, but I will probably for the most part, just be in the nine inch circular cabin. That's my preferred method, but um, I do have an order out right now that should come this week that I can talk about next episode, which will include some 2.25 millimeter, I think 24 inch knitting needles. Um, these were knit with nine inch 2.25 millimeter chow Yu circular needles, so that's my preferred method, but I have some 24 inch uh, fixed needles coming in because I'm going to try Magic Loop a little bit. And um, my first episode, I showed a baby sock that I knit with DPNs. And yeah, I love knitting with DPNs, but that project in particular, because it was so small, I think it would have been easier to keep up with um, the ribbing because I did the ribbing option for the sock. Um, I think it would have been easier to sort of manage that if I was doing it on circular needles instead of DPN. So uh, yeah, I have interchangeable needle sets, but I guess I don't have needles that are as small as a 2.25, which is again, my preferred size. So yeah, I am expecting that in a couple days and I can knit the second baby sock, first of all, but second of all, I will probably try out um, some magic loop for some socks this summer for sock camp because you know, the whole idea for sock camp uh, is to maybe step out of your comfort zone and learn a new skill or application in sock knitting. And yeah, I, I kind of have just stuck to what I prefer. Um, so I'm going to learn some new stuff and I'm looking forward to it, I guess. I mean, I might try toe up, which I haven't done. And I think that will be pretty cool. Um, it kind of seems like an interesting technique. And maybe some of you guys can let me know what you think if you're team cuff down or team toe up as they say because I have just done cuff down and I feel like regardless of if I try toe up or not I'm sure I'll prefer cuff down but it seems like it would be a cool way to especially in the beginning of, of trying it out um, it seems like so you know when you're knitting and I'm sure I'm not alone in this but you know, there's milestones in a project. So like when you're knitting socks, you finish the cuff and it's like a box you can tick off in your head. So then you know, okay, I've got this many more steps and I feel like doing toe up will kind of encourage me to think about it in a little bit of a different way. So I don't know, it might feel more rewarding, I guess, if I'm coming at it from, okay, wow, I finished the whole foot and now all I have left is the leg. Um, so yeah, we'll be trying out some different stuff. Um, I wish I had more time to really dive into more of the techniques that Kay is going to be showing off and her, her counselors, um, but I am pretty busy. So I have a feeling I won't have time to try everything. So I'm gonna stick with um, Magic Loop and trying out Toe Up. Um, those will be my goals and I'll keep you guys updated on if those happen, I hate to say it, but I'll, you know, it's always a possibility. I'll just stick with what I know just so I can um, get the socks done and so I can have something to knit on. Um, yeah, so we'll see. Um, I do have some pattern socks that uh, I'll remember to write down for next time to talk about that I want to try because I really do just knit vanilla socks like these every time, but I, I mean, I'm pretty much, I'm feeling kind of in love with some of the the patterned socks that I've been seeing recently. So 
I'm going to try some color work and some light cables for some socks. And yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, moving on. Last look. Okay, moving into works in progress. So this next one I have talked about in I think every episode so far and I promise the next two projects I'll show, after, I'll show after this have a significant amount of progress. This one has zero progress, but I'm going to show it anyway because uh, I don't know, I it's so beautiful. I think it, other than, well I don't want to get ahead of myself, there's a shawl and knitting that is my most favorite project. But other than that, this one has been one of my favorite knits to date because just working with the yarn has been such a lovely experience. So I'm going to show it just one more time without much progress, just so you can uh, see it if you haven't before or if you also really like it. And I know you won't like it the same way I do because you're not getting that sensory, you know, getting to touch it like I am. But I don't know, you, you might like it. So. Wow, without further ado, this is the Sheer V by Jessie Made Designs. Um, yeah, again, I've, I've shown this before. I don't think I've knit a single stitch since I last showed it. And the reason being, I'm at an increased portion, so I'm not, I can't just knit in the round without keeping track of where I'm at and what I'm doing. And I've been really bad about um, taking notes on my pattern while I've been knitting this. Um, so I, I just need to sit down and figure out which increase I'm at and how many more rows I have to go before my next one, um, which will take no time at all, but I've, I've been pretty devoted to finishing my socks and working on the next two projects to get them finished so that I can devote myself to this sweater. Um, so here we go. This is my sheer V. This is bottom up. So it's this is the ribbing portion and now I am working on the stockinette body. And there's a darning needle in here. There we go. The things we find in our knitting, you guys. All right, so here is my sheer V. And hopefully you're picking up on the fuzzy mohair. So here are my cakes. I'm using an undyed base paired with a very um, faint pink. So this is coming out as a very light pink, almost tan color. So I am pairing for the lace weight um, and Zula Cloud light fingering. This is the On Natural colorway, so the undyed base. Um, it's 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. So I had two skeins of this, uh, which should get me through the whole sweater, um, hopefully, because this stuff is not cheap. And uh, if it doesn't, I'm going to have to shorten something. But I think for my size, which um, I'm pretty sure I'm knitting the third size. Again, I know I've said this before, but Jessie Maid's um, patterns are all really size, in size inclusive, so there's a lot of range. So she her patterns tend to have more um, in terms of smaller options and on you know the larger side of the scale too, which is great because you know a lot of patterns are really just maybe an extra small and you know go up to maybe a double XL, but hers really they it, it fills in a lot more of those gaps. Um, so a lot more people are, are covered and can comfortably knit her patterns, which is awesome. So I think I'm knitting the third size, which is I, I think just as small. Um, and then my mohair, this is the Pearl Soho Tussock, 60% super fine kid mohair, 40% silk. So these are my two skeins. And you can really see how shiny the, this tussock is, the Pearl Soho. And yeah, this, I, as a dyer, I love undyed yarn. It makes me really happy to look at it. I feel like it's, it's softer because it hasn't been as processed. Um, so I'm always happy to get to, you know, experience a skein like this. I know it might not be the most interesting thing for everybody to look at, but I really appreciate just the, the natural fiber. I mean, obviously it has undergone some processing. It's a super wash fiber, but still, hopefully it's enjoyable for you guys to look at too. And then this was the tussock. So 
So yeah, I won't ramble on more about that one, but I do love this project and I swear the next time we see each other, I'm going to have some progress on this, even if it's just one or two more increases. <laughs> yeah, I, I do recommend this pattern. So um, again, this one is the pattern that it's going to be a, a somewhat crop. Okay, I got cut off, so I'm back. Um, yeah, this is going to be a somewhat cropped length. Um, it'll have that sheer V panel right here of just the mohair. It's like an intarsia panel, so the mohair, the mohair is knit um, singularly, and it'll have that sheer V. So I'm looking forward to this one. It'll be a really great sweater to dress up. So my next project, this one actually has some progress. So this one is being held in this project bag. This is the first project bag that I ever built. I mean, built, wow, bought. <laughs> and I actually bought this before I even started sewing my own. So this was by Toshika New York, and I found her on Etsy. I was looking for Alice in Wonderland project bags, and she had this one, which was made out of some fabric that I really wanted to get my hands on. Um, at the time, it was sold out, and so I, instead of buying the fabric to make it for myself, I bought the one that she made, and I'm so happy with it. I would do that regardless um, if I could go back. I did see that you can get the fabric now, so I was worried that it was out of production, but I think that it um, was, it was probably COVID-related, so I bought this early on, I would say, of 2020. So or maybe mid 2020. So when things were still um, highly, you know, out of stock, craft supplies were really hard to come by. I'm sure we all can remember that. Um, so fabric was hard to come by. So I was worried it was out of production, but I think it was more just that they didn't have it at the time, fabric.com. So yeah, this is <laughs> my beautiful Alice in Wonderland project bag. I have a couple of pins on here, also from Etsy. Um, a little Sailor Moon and the Drink Me potion from Alice in Wonderland. So this project is my novice sweater by Petite Knit. And this is being knit with drops air in the pearl gray colorway. So here we go. The last time you saw this, I think I hadn't even split for the sleeves yet. I'm pretty sure that I split for the, the sleeves that night after recording. So I have finished the body and now I'm starting on this sleeve. I just started this this morning and if I have some time tonight, I'll probably finish it because this is such a quick yarn to work with because of the, the weight and um, the larger knitting needles. But I do want to talk a little bit about how this project is going because it's had, there's some ups and downs of it for me. Um, so just to jog your memory, if you've already seen my show, <laughs> this is not the sweater I just showed you. This was the first iteration of it. And yeah, this was the first sweater I ever knit. Um, and one of the very first, I think like maybe the second thing I ever knit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's bad. Um, if you wanna see it more in depth, go back to episode one where you can really hear about how um, tragic this thing is. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you can see it's full of holes like where you're supposed to pick up stitches for the underarm. I mean, <laughs> that's amazing. I could probably dangle some charms off of that or something. Um, it had a folded neckline and it never was really very comfortable. It was too tight. It didn't stay folded properly. So basically what I'm doing, um, I am frogging this project. Uh, yeah, I mean, so when I knit this, I did not know how to knit. I reverse mounted all of my stitches. I didn't understand that I was pulling, so I, you know, I I didn't realize that I was pulling the yarn the wrong way over the needle. I don't know how else to, to say that. So I was I reverse mounted almost every stitch in this sweater. That's why it looks so drastically different from this one. 
at least to me it does. So you can see like here, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I think it's pretty obvious how different these two fabrics are. So here is the knitted fabric, the one I'm currently working on, and this is the reverse mounted. So you can see it's really tight. There's a lot of space in between each of the, the stitches. Um, the ribbing is significantly different. So here is the neckline for the one I'm working on. And here's this one. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So I am in the process of frogging the yarn as I need it. I've gotten one sleeve out. Um, my intention was to frog this for Dynamite Trujillo. Um, Moonstone makes uh, Tommy. She had a a cow or an anti cow recently. Um, I think it ended probably at the end of April. So I kind of missed my window. I just got too caught up. Um, it was a knit along where you could frog a project and that counted as as your entry, or you could finish a whip or um, you know, basically just utilizing the yarn that you have in whatever way you have it. So my intention again was to frog this for that, but I had no time. So I'm doing it now. I'm just almost two months behind or so. Um, so yeah, it looks kind of funny. They're kind of in the same stage right now. Uh, so yeah, um, I started this project with already having three, I think, full balls of this yarn in my stash, and I am right at the very end of what I had left over from the first project. So, um, let's see, oh. So here is what I created from the sleeve of the old one. It's getting so blown out. <laughs> Sorry about that, it's really shiny from there we go. That's a little bit better. So yeah, I pulled this out. Um, it was a little ramen-y, but not too bad. So I didn't wash it, and I'm hoping I won't regret that. Um, yeah, I, I'm really hoping that the color won't somehow be really different because just looking at this, it almost looks slightly different from what I'm knitting. And I think it's just because it spent a year or so knitted up. Um, Okay, good, we're still recording. Uh, yeah, so we'll see. But this will be the next ball that I work with. Um, I'm thinking that this will prop, this should be enough to finish the sleeve I'm on and to start the next sleeve, and then I shouldn't have to get too much more out of this one to finish the whole project. So, yeah, I'm almost done. Um, now to talk a little bit about how this one is going. Hey, here I am, here I am again. I don't know why I have a ton of space on my phone, which is where I'm recording, but it, the record time is getting shorter and shorter. So I may have to spend a few minutes playing around and seeing what's going on with that. But um, yeah, to keep going. So the first time I knit the sweater, I knit the smallest size and this time I'm knitting the small. And I have to say, I'm a little bit concerned because the yoke fits me just right. It fits how I, it, you know, wanted it to, but the body is really, really wide, and it's probably hard to tell here, but when I put this on, it drapes me, it drapes on me like this. So it's, it's really wide at the bottom of the sweater, and I'm not too opposed to that because I, I kind of prefer in a sweater like this, with this kind of yarn, um, if it was fingering weight, I would maybe want it to be a little bit more tailored and fitted to me. With this weight of yarn, I guess I, I kind of prefer it to be oversized. Like, that's great, but we'll see how it goes after both the sleeves are finished. It's kind of in an awkward stage where, I don't know, it's comfortable. I think it's going to work, but it is pretty big. So, um, next episode I should have it done, and I can show you what I mean. But I am happy with it. Um, I am knitting the sleeves at a slightly smaller needle than the pattern calls for, so 
this pattern's supposed to have kind of bigger sleeves. I mean, there's no decreases until you get to the very bottom where the cuff is going to start. So it's sort of a balloon sleeve, but because of how wide the body was, I kind of wanted the arms to be a little bit more um, tailored, just slightly, to, to kind of balance um, the, the body and the arms. So yeah, this will be my novice sweater. I'm looking forward to actually being able to wear this this year, since the other one I couldn't even wear for probably 10 minutes <laughs> this whole time. Okay, moving on to my last work in progress. And I know that probably sounds foreign to some of you guys. I, I think a lot of people knit quite a bit, um, you know, have a lot of projects going. And that's not to say I don't have some kind of older ones, but they're not active projects. I, up until recently, was actually a monogamous knitter. So I, I would just work on one project until it was done, and then I would start something new. And I think just recently, I started, I've started to get so much more excited by tons of different patterns and now you know I actually have my own personal stash so like I have lots of yarn but this is not for me sadly this is for the shop um, so my personal stash is a lot of older yarns that I I haven't used in a long time so like Karen um, one pound balls and, and, and whatnot that I used to use for crochet blankets and I still do sometimes um, but yeah my knitting stash like my, my prized yarn, I don't have as much of that, or I didn't until recently, but I have been acquiring too much yarn, so that means I have to knit all the projects. Um, so yeah, the next one. This is the Knights Who Say Knit uh, Mystery Knit Along Shawl by Lyrical Knits or um, Mariana Rilla. There's some birds outside. Okay, uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, there's been a couple of pauses. My storage was full and I was confused because I have deleted all of my old videos off of here. So I should have had like, you know, over 100 gigabytes. Anyway, everything was stored in the trash and I didn't realize I could empty that manually, so I did. So we shouldn't have any more cuts. Um, we'll see. <laughs> okay, so this next work in progress is my Knights Who Say Knit. Mystery Knit Along, uh, designed and hosted by Lyrical Knits, uh, Mary Annarella. So, Clue 5 has already released. Um, the pattern is, the Mystery Knit Along is basically over. So, I'm going to show this now with Reckless Abandon. You know, if you still don't want to see it, if you still have intentions of, of knitting it and keeping it as a surprise, then skip forward. Um, so, I'm going to go into this. This is, again, knit out of fingering weight yarns that I dyed um, but did not design. So these are based off of the kits by Miss Babs Yarn um, who partnered with Lyrical Knits to create yarn kits for this mystery knit along and I wasn't able to purchase one so I, again I dyed one myself but all credit goes to them for their creativity in creating this. So the last time I showed this I had finished clue one, two, and three. So over the past week or, week or so since I recorded, I have knit the entirety of clue four and started on clue five. So to show it again, this first half, this is clue one and two. And this is in my woven handmade basket, which has been excellent for carrying around my knitting. So this is the first half of the shawl. And it's on scrap yarn on this end, so it's the shape isn't looking quite right, but I promise you it is. Um, yeah, so this is the first half, and the second half is clues, uh, are clues three and four, and clue five has you knit them together, essentially. So. Um, I have started on clue five. They're still separate pieces. I haven't reached the point where they're actually joined, but I'm getting there. So yeah, um, again, this is a highly textured, absolutely gorgeous pattern that I will knit time and time again, I'm sure after this. Um, it's been a labor of love, but 
it's each section has actually been pretty quick to knit so if you can just set the goal of knitting a section per day you can actually pretty easily I think get this done in the time frame of the five weeks which is basically what we have for this um, if you were following it week by week but the first week I happened to be on vacation from work so I, I got it done no problem and I thought like this is going to be such a breeze I think I probably finished the first clue within two or three days of it being out and so then I had to wait for the second clue because um, they were coming out on Mondays and by then I was back at work so it might my, my knitting time definitely kind of dropped off at that point um, so now here is clue three and four so you'll see you'll notice a lot of similarities in the two um, they're you know very similar not identical but basically so the color gradient um, was definitely different on this side of things and I still can't decide if I like the other half or this half better as far as like the, the way that the colors all came out but here we go hopefully it's not blown out too badly so you can kind of see some of the texture and I really can't wait to wear this and I can't wait to block it so that everything can really pop more. So I'm using 75-25 merino nylon fingering for this and the kits that Miss Babs created were two-ply fingering skeins of just pure merino I believe. So mine's coming out probably a little bit different than it would have if I had used that kit but it's just incredible. <laughs> I wish I could wear it now. So I'm on clue five which is um, I think it's just this section so far so it's a little bit of color work basically I'll have to do this section on on this half and then I have to put my live stitches from the other half onto needles and then repeat the section and eventually I'll be combining them so it's going to be a very long shawl at some point <laughs> but right now it's just this little baby which would make a really great tapestry so if you need some wall art, there you go. So this was based off of the Burn Her colorway. So it's really cool because I, I feel like it does look like I'm kind of engulfed in flames. But this is, this is going to be such a beautiful project. Um, this will be probably an all-time favorite. It's going to be hard to top this. Uh, yeah, I could not be happier with this project. Um, I can't wait to for us all to see it when it's done. I've been uh, following like the, the tag on Instagram for this knit along. So I have seen other people's fully completed and yeah, it's giving me a lot of motivation. I just, I just need the time. So I, I knit, after I stopped recording last time, I did knit on this nonstop. So yeah, I went through all of clue four and then I started clue five, but I really felt like I wanted to get my novice sweater done because it's not, you know, it's a it's a good project. It's easy to work on. It's been something that I could travel with and, you know, I've had doctor's appointments and um, it's something I can sit in a waiting room and, and work on with no problem. Like this, I couldn't just take with me. Not with the yarn management and having to pay attention to the pattern. Um, but yeah, I want to get that one off the needles because A, I want to finish my sheer B and B, I really want to get to my Alho by Anna Joanna, um, the, the sweater pattern I mentioned, I think, in episode two. So if you want to see more about that project, you can go back to episode two and look at the yarns that I got. Um, if you're familiar with that pattern, I'm knitting exactly the sweater that she has in her main project page. So it's going to be gorgeous, and I really want to get to that one like so badly. So. I do need to hurry up and get some of these projects done. But yeah, just admire it for another minute. It's beautiful. I know I mentioned this last time, but I think as simple as this section is, I think that this one is my favorite. I love the peach with the black and the texture. It's all raised. Hopefully you can see that. Although this section is also a, a close second. So I do highly, highly recommend this pattern. 
um, especially if you want to become more familiar with knitting techniques that maybe you haven't tried yet because the pattern is very funny um, and very educational. So if anything looks confusing, there's definitely a lot of help associated. The glossary for the stitches is really descriptive, but Mary also has videos on YouTube on how to knit certain things like her, her moose stitches. Um, yep, I definitely recommend this one. So next I'm going to show the one procurement that I managed to get in the mail um, since my last recording. I actually purchased this, um, I think at the very beginning of May, if not the end of April, one of the two. And it came all the way from Ontario, Canada, so it took a little while, but that was to be expected. Um, and it finally got here, and I think it actually got here on the day that I went to the doctor, so it was so nice to find it in my mailbox after like three and a half hours in a doctor's office. Um, so yeah, I, I mentioned this before, but now I can actually show you. These are stitch markers that my fiber friend uh, Tracy um, of Grizzly Knits made. She is a stitch marker maker, say that 10 times fast, and her work is, is gorgeous. Um, it's very, it's very high quality. I don't know what else to say. I mean, I love her designs and she puts a lot of attention to detail and, and beauty in the design. So here we go. The packaging is really cute. So here are my stitch markers. And I see on the back, this is called the Cottontail Collection. Let me get them situated or situated haha, here. So I definitely couldn't resist this adorable, oh man, it's hard to do this on camera. Okay, here we go. This little beautiful bunny and these gorgeous gemstones. So it looks like the bunny is more of an actual progress keeper. So it's on, um, it's on a clasp and then these are stitch markers. So. I'm so excited and now that I've shown you, I can actually open them and, and use them. So yeah, you can find her uh, on Instagram, um, it looks like Pinterest, uh, Twitter, Facebook if you have that, and um, Etsy is where her shop is currently located. So this, again, this is Gridley Knits and I will have her linked down below. Yeah, one more, one more beautiful shot here. The next episode, I'll have a lot more procure, procurements because um, Webs just had their anniversary sale, and there was was a good bit of stuff on there that was on on pretty good discount. So I picked up a few things for some projects I have in mind, uh, smaller projects, not sweater quantities. I'm not doing that um, anytime soon, but I've got a couple hats I'm going to knit. Um, and yeah, just a, just a few things. And I also purchased yarn from another Canadian shop actually. And um, I'll have to look up how to say it because I think the name might be French. And um, I took Spanish for seven years, but not, not French. So next episode, I'll, I'll tell you more about it. And I should have it by then, but I have a shawl in mind to knit. So that will be next. It, I think it's a linen yarn, which is really cool. So I am going to move on to moving the stuff out of the way. <laughs> That's not what I was going to say. Okay, um, before I fully dive into shop news and my update for today, I do want to just show a, um, a five skein kind of gradient set that I dyed. And I, I have to say, when I dyed this, I had every intention of listing it in the shop for sale. And I'm not saying that's not going to happen, but I, these are all of my favorite colors, <laughs> what I'm about to show you. And I'm thoroughly obsessed with this, this set, and I very much want to keep it for myself. So I put up a picture of these on Instagram, and I took a, a poll for if I should 
list these on Etsy or keep them for myself to knit a stripes by Andrea Mowry because I think so I got the I just bought the pattern from her she had it half off because I think she's doing like a spontaneous knit along um, I should have read a little bit more in depth but honestly I was just excited to get the pattern on sale because I knew I'd knit it eventually um, and it just happened to align with me dyeing this the set and I dyed it before I bought the pattern and yeah I don't know you guys enable me because I, I took that poll and something like 77% of people said to keep it for myself and to knit uh, a stripe so yeah I, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet this if I do post these for the update it probably won't be today um, I'll probably just put them in there at some point and when I have more of this yarn base in stock I plan on dyeing some kits if there's interest eventually um, so I'm still trying to figure out what to do man maybe I should show you the yarn so this is the set that I dyed <laughs> and again these are all of my favorite colors um, not that there's a huge range here but it's nuance you guys that's what it's all about is the nuance so the darkest shade um, here, my idea for how to pair these would be this, it's a plum purple black brown. Um, there's a lot of depth of shade with this one. I think it's a little bit more deep, it's a little deeper in person than maybe on the camera, but you get the idea. That looks pretty close. And it would go to, um, so this one is a tonal, and then it would go to this uh, speckled skein and this is merino singles so this is single ply um, pure merino so I, I would never use this for something like socks but I again my idea was to have the set available for a sweater or a shawl and, and yeah that's that's where we that's how we got here so this one is basically the same color as this but it's a different um, tone or it's this one is of course a deeper one um, but you can see they're basically the same but light and dark um, so I had these two and then my idea was to go to this deeper shade of um, sort of like a, a mauve purple definitely more purple than than mauve maybe um, again a little bit darker in person than on the camera and yeah this isn't necessarily a true fade because you know we've got such a leap in shades here but that was again why I was thinking this would make a great stripes because there's a lot more contrast um, but it's it's still subtle it's in the same color range so that was the idea and then it would go to another speckled so these are divided up by speckled skeins um, and this one is this same same uh, color same tone but different shade of what I was that's what I was getting at earlier. So this one is obviously much lighter, but the speckles are of this. And same deal with the first two. And then the lightest shade is definitely more of a mauve purple, but a light one. And yeah, the camera wants to pick these up as I think slightly more purple than they are. I don't know, it's hard to say. These, these are pretty purple. But yeah, I would love for you guys to tell me in the comments what you think. Um, if there's any one of you who is just hankering to buy this, please let me know so that we can make that happen and I'm not so unable to keep all the, the yarn for myself. Because um, I could always make this for myself again. you know. So if any of you are interested, let me know. But if there's no strong opinions one way or the other, this may have to be a stripes for myself. And if I didn't mention, and I probably did, but stripes is a pattern by... Andrea Mowry so so yeah um, this would have been shop update news but we'll see okay so moving into actual shop update news this is a sock knitting kit update so the idea is that since summer sock camp is starting in two days so I'm not quite on the ball with getting these kits available and to you to cast on in time, but you know, maybe maybe 
I mean, I'm sure a lot of you are planning on knitting many pairs of socks, so hopefully these will be at least one of them for you. Um, so yeah, this is my sock kit update. So I have a lot of one colorway option, I have a few of another, and then I have one to two, kind of depending, uh, of a third one. But I am, I have decided to kind of do something different in my shop. So these kits I'm going to show are all a main 100 gram skein paired with a 20 gram uh, Donegal Tweed skein, a mini skein. And there's a variety, uh, there's two different bases to choose from as far as the main skein goes. But I've decided that with any of the sock yarn that's available in my Etsy shop, um, while supplies last, and I, I have a good bit, so this should be this should run for a while. But if you come across a colorway in my shop in particular that you would like to purchase with a contrast mini, then I will dye that to order. So I can dye the contrast mini, and again, this is a tweed mini, so this it will be a tweed base. Um, I can dye that to order for the skein that you pick out if you're interested in something other than what I've already put together. Um, if you want to just send me a message on Etsy or on Instagram, then we can kind of work out what you are looking for. Um, I will charge the same amount for the custom sock kit as I would for the sock kits that will be listed today. So the price on the, the sock skein that you will pick out from the Etsy shop, um, it will not be that price. It will be a couple dollars more to include the mini and the custom dyed mini. But again, it will be the same price as the sock kits I'm knitting now. Um, so yeah, if, if you're interested in doing that at all, again, just send me a message, preferably on Etsy because it's a little bit easier to manage the, the business side of things on Etsy than it would be on Instagram. Um, and I think that if you go to a particular listing, so you know, say you pick out a particular Skein. If you go to that one, there should be a contact seller option, and I think if you do that, it will show me that you, which skein you're directly referencing. Um, but just in case, you know, make sure you put in a note about which skein you're looking at, and I will custom dye the mini skein to whatever specifications that you want. So um, because it's such a small gain, I, a small skein. Wow, the episode full of. Uh, replacing words with with other things um, I think it would be better to do tonals but and again it's got that tweed so it, it's kind of like speckled without being speckled with dye but if you want it to be speckled or you know slightly variegated we can we can work that out so just let me know if you're interested um, but for the sock kits that I already have available I have now this is one that I said I would either have one or two. I can't decide what I want to do here because I only dyed two skeins of this and one of them, so this is a multi, multi-colored variegated skein and this one, so this, this colorway is called Wildflowers and this one has a lot more of those, of the colors in this skein. And this one didn't um, didn't really pick up any of the yellow dye, so this one is more just the purples and the blues, and it's got a little bit of um, the the pink speckles. But you know, I, I I must have not been paying as much attention when I dyed this one, and so it didn't come out quite the same. So I, I don't know if I should list this one or not. I might list it separately as more of a one of a kind because this is a colorway that I. Um, can repeat and will be repeating. Um, and the camera's kind of blowing it out here, but. So this is a 7525 Merino nylon sock base, and that's what these two will be offered as. And they are paired with a periwinkle um, mini. So this one is not as high contrast. Um, this skein, I think, will be a great high contrast with these more so than the other, which is why I'm a little apprehensive, but because this one's so variegated, you're going to have some, definitely a lot more variegation in the sock. So here are the tweed minis. Um, yeah, it's got all the fun tweedy bits, as they say. And so yeah, that will be one kit available. Um, 
Then I have one of my new most favorite colorways. This one is called Snow Cone. And this one is, um, let me see, I'm going to try to turn, off, turn down my lights real quick so you can see this a bit better. Okay, that's a bit better. So these are much more um, variegated. They are sort of like a pastel rainbow. And I, I just love these. And they do make me think of a carnival. And, um, you know, if you get like shaved ice or snow cone and all the different syrups, you've got all these different colors on top of like your, your white sort of, you know, the ice. <laughs> Duh. Um, so yeah, I, I love this this colorway. I think these are going to make some really fun and uh, beautiful socks. And these ones are also paired with the Periwinkle mini skeins. So these are definitely higher contrast. Um, so this will be really fun. I can't wait to see these knit up. I can't decide which is my favorite part because there's just so much variety in each of the skein as far as the color distribution goes and the colors uh, within the skein. So yeah, I cannot wait to, to see these knit up. And finally, for the, the yarn, I have one more colorway option. This one is available on two bases. So the main skein can either be purchased on a 75-25 merino nylon or on a two-ply uh, pure merino fingering base. And, you know, I know a lot of people, I know there's not many people who prefer to knit socks with just merino. So I think that this mini skein, um, I think that this kit or this set could be used for other projects. You could knit a hat and have an accent brim, or um, this can be a, a small cowl, and you can do some, you know, some moderate color work or something with the mini skein. So there's other applications if, if you don't feel comfortable using this for socks. Um, I think that it's a really soft and cozy base, so it would make some nice slippers if you're doing more so around the house. And you know, lots, there's also lots of people who don't really care about that that nylon addition. I mean, I, I do think it's important. I will be honest about that. But you know, there's lots of people who have successfully knit out of two ply. So I have a couple of, of options here. So this is my Sunfield colorway, and this is a colorway that I, I already keep in the shop. So this is a regular, and for the, the kit, it's being paired with a golden yellow um, Donegal Tweed. So on the two-ply, this is how the dye picks up. So this is what you would receive, is this set here. So this is a sort of a pretty purple skein with some golden speckles. So I think that these will really um, play together well and bring out a lot of those, those beautiful jewel tones together. So that is one option. And yeah, I mean, I love how plump two ply is and how textured. It's definitely one of my favorite bases uh, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of, of how this feels. It's especially soft because it's just pure merino and it's it's a lot of fun to work with. So there is one version. And then I have a couple of 75, 25 merino nylon. And these ones took the dye a bit darker. So there's going to be even more contrast, I'd say, with these. But again, this is a, a purple skein um, with some golden speckles paired with a mustard yellow mini. So yeah, I'm going to try to hold up all the, the yarn here.
I guess I forgot to mention, I also have wildflower available on worsted. So here's the shop update. <laughs> I just love looking at the, the stack. So finally for the update, I have just three project bags available this time around and I had every intention of having more, but I ran out of interfacing while I was making these and um, so I was unfortunately not able to make more, but I should have more by my next update because I love sewing project bags, especially these ones. and. I know that you guys love these bags and I have such so many varieties of fabric that I haven't gotten to use yet. Um, but for this time around, I have two strawberry bags and this is my favorite design. I think it's just adorable and lovely. So I have a mustard yellow accented option and this one is more of a sort of jewel tone red. So these are both going to be available today. They have a white, very soft uh, white inside. So those are the strawberry bags. And I have one uh, koi bag. And this one you have not seen before in my shop. So this is going to be available today. This one has a gray inside and these bags are the perfect size for sock knitting. Um, they very easily can hold your sock knitting project. Um, they make good travel bags and I use these for all kinds of things. So knitting of course, and um, again, good. they're good makeup travel bags or toiletries or no, just little things. So I'll have three of these bags available today. I think an adorable pairing would be a snow cone and periwinkle sock set with a strawberry bag. This definitely says summertime to me. This would be great for summer sock camp. So yep, check out my Etsy shop at Paper Crane Yarns, link below if you're interested in any of, of, of this yarn or anything I just showed. So that's it for the uh, fiber and yarn and knitting aspect of things. So yeah, now I'm going to just talk a little bit about um, some of my favorite books and you know, wherever, wherever the rest of this talk takes me. So one thing I wanted to talk a little bit, a little bit about is origami. Um, yeah, you, you may or may not care or wonder why my business is called Paper Crane Yarns, but um, origami has always been something that I have I've, I've loved to learn more about and to to do um, I have a you can see the start of a paper crane mobile behind me and I've, I've made a couple of these now but eventually um, it's an embroidery hoop that I wrapped in a cotton yarn and I'm folding lots of paper cranes and hanging them from the mobile. So eventually that'll be hanging in the shop. Um, I made my mom one one year with rainbow colored paper cranes. This one's going to be my studio colors. Um, I, I love origami very, very much. And I actually feel like origami is very similar to knitting and I'll explain why. So I guess I love math. Um, and that's weird for me to say now as an adult, because as a kid, I hated it. And I went to a school actually for math and science for high school. And I was terrible at math, uh, really bad. Um, because I, I guess I felt like I couldn't do it. So I didn't really try, but as I've gotten older, I've appreciated it more. And my favorite aspect of math is visual mathematics and that is origami and algorithms and everything like that. So um, I got really into speed cubing in high school and I would do competitions. Um, so that's speed solving. I, I will say Rubik's cubes because that's what they're known as, but um, I used a different brand, something much more fast. 
So to me, speed cubing and uh, origami and knitting are all very similar because it's a lot of fold patterns, right? And algorithms, which is what that is. So it's much more obvious with something like origami or um, solving a cube. So those are going to be really just all about fold patterns. So it's the way that you're you're solving the, the problem, so to speak, with folding and permutations. And so knitting feels very similar because, I don't know, knitting feels like a, a one big fold pattern, like every stitch is a fold. And maybe that is a huge tangential correlation, but that's what it feels like to me. So paper cream yarns, um, I, I'm inspired by that love that I have for those things that are, are it's, it's those minute details that really intrigue your mind. And um, there's something so rhythmic and, and mathematic, uh, mathematical about it. And I also really appreciate the, the whimsy. So, so while I love those sorts of things, um, I, I studied linguistics and creative writing in college. And that was my, my bigger focus all through my education. Um, and linguistics, again, feels like origami to me. It's, it's all about, um, you know, you've got, you've got uh, formulas and that's what all of this is to me. It's, I just love being able to put together and make those matches. It's just so intriguing and, and like rewarding uh, to be able to do that. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I should have probably written my thoughts down so I could better explain this. And I'm sure, you know, if you're, if you're still here listening to this, thank you. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm, I love the whimsy of paper cranes specifically. Um, the, the history, the cultural history and the, the beauty um, of them. I feel like they are so symbolic of, of like peace and, and harmony and, and whimsy. I, that's just how I see it. Um, I find them to be really exciting. So all that to say, I am uh, having to relearn a lot of the origami I used to know. So I used, when I took visual mathematics in school, we actually did a lot of origami and we did some really complex folds that I wouldn't be able to replicate today currently. Um, but I have this amazing book. It's um, secondhand, it's pretty old. <laughs> Uh, it's just Origami, The Art of Paper Folding by Robert Harbin, and it says it's a lavishly illustrated guide to fascinating pastime, the ancient Japanese art of folding a plain piece of paper into intricate and charming figures. And yeah, I would agree that it is a fascinating um, pastime. Uh, so here are the, the lavish illustrations. <laughs> Very lavish. Uh, so I am working on, right now, a rabbit. So that will be my next fold, or the next one I intend to learn, because I love rabbits. And I'm excited to, to work on that. And then another one I'm interested in is this tropical bird here. So this book is full of, of beautiful um, folds, like an ostrich. <laughs> That one's a bit more complex, but I think it all starts with the paper crane. So if you can learn how to fold a paper crane, and it's very simple, um, you'll get that muscle memory. You won't have to refer to uh, like your, your pattern um, really ever again. Once you get it down and you practice it, um, it, it's so easy to go from there because you're going to learn all kinds of folds just from knitting a paper crane and you'll be able to get to a point where you can do more intricate folds. Um, so I am so excited to go through this book a bit more. It's been a minute since I've worked on it, um, but it's, it's beautiful. And I feel like this is turning into a book review, but I'm not sure, if, I'm, sure you can, I'm sure you can find this book somewhere. Uh, yeah, I got this secondhand, so. I'm working on some some origami, and more so for the for the shop. I would love to have more displays, and uh, I love having origami hanging from the ceiling. So, I'm I'm working on getting some more of that done.
So next, next I'll just talk a little bit about my favorite author, um, hands down. And this is Haruki Murakami. So this is my current collection as far as hard copies go. Uh, I also have a lot of audiobooks for the things that I don't currently have in a paper copy. So if, if you've not heard of Murakami, or if you haven't read Murakami, but maybe you're curious, I would say check him out immediately. <laughs> yeah, this is my favorite author. Um, his books are also very whimsical. They are surreal. Um, you know, I, they're not for everybody in the sense that there are a lot of difficult subjects in these books, but uh, they all have their place. So, you know, it, it's they're very well composed and fascinating. I mean, this is like the definition of a page turner to me. But it's not just the the story; it's the atmosphere that Murakami creates in his worlds. And if you've read the books or any of the books, then you must know what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, these are truly wonderful. Um, you know, maybe read the synopsis before you decide if it's something for you. There might, again, might be some subjects that are hard to deal with or not something that you're comfortable reading, but yeah, I, I love these. And um, this one was my first ever Murakami, 1Q84, which to some, you know, longtime Murakami fans might be a little surprising because this is one of his more recent publications. This one, I believe, was published in Japan as um, a series, so when it was released as this tome that it is, um, all of the the novellas were put together in one, so this is even sectioned off into, I think, the three three or four parts. Um, yeah, this book is it's huge, and I couldn't put it down. I read this way too quickly for for I would say what it is because that's just how in love with it I was. Um, so yeah, you know, some people will say that it's surprising to start with Murakami with this book because, you know, it's a lot of, I guess if you read his earlier work, it's a bit of a departure. At least that's what other people say. But having gone back and read the earlier work, I, I guess I can sort of see that, but it's still, it still feels like the the essence of, of Murakami's writing. Um, so yeah, this, you know, you could start here if you were looking for a place to start with Murakami. Uh, this definitely set in stone my love for Murakami and I didn't have to wonder, you know, was that worth it? Will I read another one? Because yeah, without a doubt, my favorite. But so next I have the Wind Up Bird Chronicle and all of the more recent editions of his books are gorgeously uh, bound. I mean, very colorful and just gorgeous. Um, and then, of course, there's Mirakami. Uh, so the Wind Up Bird Chronicle, I would say, is almost similar to 1Q84. Um, again, these books are highly surreal. It's, it is like stepping into a parallel world. Um, it's, they're different enough from the world we live in that you can definitely become, it, it's not so foreign that you can't imagine it. That's, that's what's amazing about this genre. Um, it is, it's like taking the everyday and inserting something strange or unusual in all the aspects. So it's easy to picture and to follow along um, almost in a frightening way because yeah th these books they're so surreal so I do recommend this one I read it and I listened to it um, the audible audiobooks of his books at least the ones I've listened to are all really really good I love the narrator and I think he does a good job um, of really uh, acting out how I, I feel like like this book should be personified so this one is amazing. So I also have, 
This is Colorless Tsukuru Tazaki. And um, this one also has that newer cover with this, you know, all these bright colors. And this one I have yet to read, so I can't talk too much about the content, but I can only imagine that this one is also incredible. Um, so this one is just currently part of my collection, and I will read this one eventually. I also have After Dark, and I think that this is one of the more original, uh, this has to be one of the more original editions, uh, American editions, um, because this one has some library binding, so I guess this came from Queen's Library. I got this off of thriftbooks.com, and I definitely recommend getting your communist books off of there because you can find, um, if you're a collector like me, you can find a lot of editions to choose from, so you know, if you want a particular cover style, or if you want all of the cover styles, <laughs> thrift books is really great for that. Um, so yeah, After Dark. I also have Hard Boiled Wonderland and The End of the World. This one is an exciting one. I I've just barely started on this one. And uh, finally, I have Norwegian Wood, which was... Um, I don't, I don't remember if this was his first novel, but it was the first novel that put him into the literary place he is now in, far, in terms of recognition, um, you know, national praise and recognition. So this is another one that people will say is almost a departure from his work, which is funny because it's so early on. So I don't think that is really even a possibility. Um, but this one is incredible, and I will say this one is hard to read, so, yeah, the, um, I do definitely recommend Norwegian Wood. Um, this one is a smaller one, but it's not a quick read because there's a lot of difficult subjects in here, so it's, um, it's not something, at least in, for me, that I can just fly through because I definitely have to take my time and really consider and um, yeah. So that's my Murakami collection. So I think that pretty much wraps up everything I had planned to talk about. Um, yeah, next episode I will hopefully have um, one or two more completed projects and potentially one cast on. And I should have all of the things that I ordered that I shouldn't have <laughs> to show you. So, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and wrap it up because I think that this has gone on for quite a while. So, uh, I do, oh, I do want to just say, um, I've had a lot of people commenting on my, my videos so far with some really great advice for things that I've talked about as far as maybe issues I've had with my knitting or some ideas or like pattern feedback. Um, just feedback in general so yeah thank you guys because you know I I'm pleasantly surprised by how embracing this community has been and how kind everybody has been not that I'm surprised that you guys are kind people but the internet can be a scary place so um, yeah so far it's been a really welcoming uh, place for me so thank you and if you've offered me advice um, I think I've taken a lot of the advice I've already gotten like in my last episode, I believe, or my second episode, one of the two, somebody commented when I was talking about issues I had with uh, bind, bind offs being too tight, that I should try going up a needle size when I bind off. So I did try that and it did make a difference. So, so yeah, I always appreciate feedback um, from you guys. Okay. <laughs> so thank you for tuning in and thank you for sticking around to the end if you have. Um, I look forward to our next episode. For now, you can get more regular updates from me on Instagram um, as Paper Crane Yarns. So check me out there if you want to see a lot of updates about my garden. That tends to be what I kind of fill that space with in my stories. And yeah, you can find me on Ravelry if you want to. I don't have a group for this podcast yet, but maybe eventually down the line um, we can do something like that. Uh, 
and of course buy them on Etsy specifically today or sometime in the near future if you're looking to shop my update um, or any of the other yarns that I have in stock or if you want to uh, work on a custom socket with me we can do that too um, yeah I think that wraps it up so thanks again and I'll see you guys next time enjoy all of the making you get to do until I see you then bye